All right, team. I got a great message for you today. I sat down with singer, songwriter, Grammy Award winner, Zach Williams. Zach has a great story that he shares with us. And he just talks about, you know, that people see him today as this Grammy winning artist, lives in Nashville, um, you know, big hit with Dolly Parton. And that's, that's what people see today. But he shares that, you know, his journey was not always this bright. There was darkness. There were times of frustration. You know, he was a high school and college basketball player and he got hurt. And when he got hurt, he turned to music and he also turned to some other things that, uh, that weren't as positive. So I wanted to do this episode for a long time and I'm so glad that uh, my new friend Zach Williams was able to join me. And I hope you enjoy his story. I hope you can relate to it. And I hope you could relate to this 10 to 20 year period, you know, that he had to stay very focused in order to get himself to where he is today. Many people see success as an overnight thing. And once again, it's proven that it's not. And he shows us that. So I want you to sit back and enjoy this episode with Zach Williams. Enjoy. Cool. Well, you know, I did some reading on you and. And I saw you were a former athlete. Yeah. Basketball, right? Yeah. Yeah, I played basketball. Okay. High school and then a little bit of, you got hurt in college, right? I got hurt in college, uh, played a year in college and then ended up uh, falling in love with music, you know? So it, it um, kind of was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Was, was basketball, a pa- was it a passion of yours or, or what? Did you think you were going to go pro? Was it, did you have those kind of dreams? Oh yeah. That was, I mean, when I was growing up as a kid, my, my dad and my uncles were both, you know, they were kind of all basketball stars in our hometown and we lived in a small community and it was, I mean, it was a basketball community. I mean, every the school that we went to was, it always had a great basketball team. And so, uh, you know, for me, I knew that if I wanted to out of this small town, you know, when I got older, like my ticket was going to be, get a college basketball scholarship and you know and hopefully hopefully go pro like one that was my dream was to go pro and so uh that was i mean really i played aau and you know all kinds of summer leagues and and stuff i mean i i ate and slept basketball from the time i was about sixth grade until my senior year um <clears throat> unfortunately when i was a senior here in high school uh you know, I started making some bad choices in about 10th or 11th grade and running around mm. with kind of the wrong crowd and d- dabbling in, you know, stuff that everybody gets involved in, you know, in high school. And next thing I know, I'm, you know, going every day afternoon over to buddies' houses and we're smoking pot and, you know, drinking mm. beer and stuff like that. And in my senior year, um, I, I ended up getting in trouble with a few other guys on our team and uh, I was suspended from school and uh, got kicked off my basketball team. And I had a couple of Division One colleges at the time that were, you know, scouting me and recruiting, and I lost those scholarship offers and ended mm. up drop, dropping out of high school. And I, I got my GED, my, you know, as soon as I got out of school, and I, I went to work for my dad's construction company. And so while I was out for that year working for my dad, I met this guy that had played college basketball at this junior college mm. in Northwest Arkansas, and he. He said, you know, I, I know who you are, and, you know, I think I can get you a try if, if you keep your nose clean, basically. And so I went up there and, and walked on and tried out, and I made the team and got a full scholarship. And then the, the day before my freshman season opened, we were in a walkthrough practice, and I didn't have my shoes laced up, and we were all goofing around, and one of the guys went up to do something, and I, and I jumped up to dunk it, and when I did, I landed on his foot, and my Oof. ankle just – I tore five ligaments in my ankle and I was in a cast for six or eight weeks. And then I was in a walking cast for another six weeks. And it just, it really, you know, sidelined me for about a, about a year trying to recover from that. But while I was doing that, I, I had picked up my guitar, my roommates get guitar in college and start to play some chords. And then I, and then I came home on a weekend and my dad had played music, you know, as long as I could remember, he was, he was a musician and I grabbed guitars and all he had that he would let me take was a 12 string so i just took six <laughs> strings off of it taught myself how to play this guitar with with you know a wide neck on it and and i just fell in love with music and i started teaching myself how to play you know chords and i took a creative writing class and and uh man i just you know when when that happened i played my second year in college but my passion was already 
starting to move towards this music idea that I wanted and basketball was taking a back seat. Yeah. It's amazing how an injury could sort of send you on a totally different path. Yeah, I hear it a lot, uh, you know, from, from former athletes that say, you know, I, I just kind of lost my love for the game and I love that game, but I, I lost it, but now it moved me into this. Exactly. I mean, it's you know? kind of how God works. I mean, you know, we, we play a lot of arenas and a lot of churches that have basketball courts, you know, and so <laughs> it's kind of fun. It's like, I'm still getting to do what I've always loved doing and now I get to do what, you know, I've dreamed of doing for the last 20 years. So it's pretty cool how all that works out. You know, I still play a lot of basketball when I get the chance. And, uh, but I, you know, it's, it's not, it's not where my passions anymore, but it, you know, it's, it's kind of cool how I still get to do the things that I grew up loving. Yeah. You, you find a different way to get to the arena. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I, we, listen, we all, many of us are former athletes. We're always athletes at heart, yeah. but we have that moment that comes, that comes to us and we have to make that choice. And, yeah. uh, you know, for you, it, it definitely, it definitely worked out. When did you realize that, that, you know, you can do something with this music thing? When, how'd you realize you were a songwriter and, and, and how did you just realize that you could do this? Well, I probably, when I, when I started teaching, I was 19 years old, uh, picked up a guitar, started teaching myself. And it was probably almost 10 years later before I was at the point where I was like, I'm gonna play some of the songs I've been writing in front of people. I carried a, a guitar with me for about 10 years and, and I played it every day and I would write music. And I can remember some of those early songs I was writing. I thought they were the best songs, you know, in, in the <laughs> world. And I look back on a lot of that stuff that I wrote and it, it's just awful. But I think what, when I really started taking notice that like there was something going on with it was, there was a there was a local band in my hometown and they were you know they had songs on tv and they were kind of going places and um we were at a you know at a party one night in somebody's garage and i just remember picking up a guitar and playing um playing a song that i'd written and it was like everything got got quiet and people were really like listening and and these guys you know that were in this band they were like dude like where have you been like who who are you you know and all this and mm. They invited me over to play some music with them the next night and within weeks you know i was in their band and you know we were going to go in the studio and cut a record so it was just kind of like i started i started noticing that when one of the guys in, in that band told me he was like man when you open your mouth everybody just kind of stopped and listened he was like it, it was like you had something to say and so uh that was an encouragement for me you know because for, for so long i just did it for myself because yeah. i, I love doing it and I, and I think after 10 years of, of really working on my craft it was like okay now it's time to to share this with people and uh yeah so that's kind of how it started i was almost 30 years old before i ever you know actually played music in front of anybody and i'm 42 now so yeah zach you know what i'm always fascinated with i'm fascinated with that 10-year period yeah. because that's the period where people quit people question themselves people get into some some dark places and some nasty stuff and and for you what, I mean, what, what went on? Were you working with dad's construction company then yeah. too, for that 10 years? I was, I was in college, moved back to, moved back to Arkansas, or I was living in Northwest Arkansas. I moved back home to Northeast Arkansas and I went to a college called Arkansas State for about two years. Um, and I was working on a graphic design degree. And while mm. I was working on that degree, I was, you know, getting more and more involved in music. And, you know, the, the school was like less and less important. So I kind of threw that to the side and started chasing this music dream. But, you know, unfortunately, um, it did. I, I mean, it did lead me down some dark roads because I, I just embraced this like lifestyle of what I thought, you know, a rock and roll or hmm. you know, outlaw kind of country, whoever. I was like, I, I just embraced that lifestyle of what I thought that had to be and kind of took on this persona of like this just reckless dude. And I, you know, I lived, you know, in the, in the extreme every night, you know, partying too hard and, not really knowing what the next day brought and especially after i you know met the guys that i played in the band with you know when mm. i when i started touring in my late 20s early 30s um i mean we were we were i was living really hard you know and i was still working for my dad's construction company but i might not you know work but a few days a week because he he would send me home some days so he'd be like you don't even need to be here you know mm. um but yeah um i think it was I got married when I was about 33 and my wife that, that uh, I married had two small kids at the time. They were four and nine and you know, I was living this lifestyle and she was constantly telling me that I needed to change. And I was kind of telling her that, you know, you knew this when you met me, I'm not changing. Mm. 
we fought about that for about five years until, you know, until I finally gave my life to the Lord, you know? And so, um, but yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a pretty wild, to be honest, almost 20 years from the time I was 19. I gave my life to the Lord when I was 33. So from 19 to 33, about 14 years, I just, I lived pretty wild Hmm. and it was pretty awful, you know? And so, um, that, yeah, but I mean, I think I hope I answered that question. That yeah, was- no, it's good. I, I like I said, we're we're just two two former athletes that are athletes at heart chatting about about life because you know there's people today that are dealing with the same thing. They're in that space that you were in, and they haven't gotten to that that point of choice yet at thirty you know thirty three years old. And that's why I love to talk about you know where where folks have been because. You know, people see you now, they see you on stage, they see you, you know, doing the Grammy thing. They, they see all that, but they don't know the man. They don't know what, what this guy's been through. I think that's a, I think that's a lot of people. That's, that's a lot of people that kind of come on the scene that you, you think you've never heard of, and all of a sudden, here they are boards and doing this. And, and if you start digging in, you realize that it was a 20-year struggle to get to where they were. And, you know, there was a lot of ups and downs in that 20 years. And, and I think, you know, I, I was always, you know, kind of taught, you know, like that's what separates, you know, people is like, just keep on working and, and keep on trying to get to where you want to be. Don't ever give up on it, you know? And so that's, mm. that was kind of my mentality with everything. And I hope, you know, I'm, I'm trying to teach that to my kids, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it took a long time to get, to get here. And, and so, you know, it's kind of funny when people are like, yeah, man, you just kind of came out of nowhere overnight. And I'm like, yeah overnight in 20 years you know but yeah so um but yeah man it's it was it's been it's been a fun it's been a fun last few years i would say over over the 20 that it took to get here the last few have been pretty amazing yeah no i would say so i think it's uh also important to talk about for you you know those 20 those 20 years i mean how did you not quit i mean because you listen 20 years is a long period of time and most people they want it yesterday you know, when I, I, I mean, when I first started playing music, you know, I was, it, it didn't really like sink in that this could be something, you know, big until at about that eight or nine year mark when, when things started, when I was starting to write some music that I felt like was actually decent, mm. people were stopping to listen, I recorded a record, um, and then, and it, it was, you know, we thought it was really good, we ended up getting people interested in Europe and we started touring over overseas and doing things like that. And so it was kind of around that time that I was like, you know what, this, this could be like something that I could do for a living. You know, unfortunately I, the way I was living wasn't, you mm-hmm. know, I wasn't doing that right. And so anytime we would get ourselves in front of, you know, any sort of record label or playing a showcase, you know, they probably saw this, you know, this guy that, that wasn't going to last, you know, because of the way mm-hmm. I was living my life and, in my mind, I thought that's what they were looking for. Yeah. So um, I think I think that's kind of what kind of got me going. But then, to be honest with you, when <clears throat> when I gave my life to the Lord, I was we were in it was 2012, and we were on a on our second tour to Europe. It was we were on a month long tour, and I was about two weeks into this tour, and man, I was I was just at probably one of the lowest places of my life, and you know, for everybody on the outside looking in, they thought I was this happy guy that had everything going. We were this local band in our hometown and everybody thought we were about to sign a record deal and we were this big deal. But my wife was pregnant with our daughter and I was just out living just this crazy life. And mm. I woke up one morning and just was like, I'm, I'm so like ready to be done with this. You know, I'm, I, I can't take it anymore. And I'd already been talking to one of the guys in my band who had started going to church and we were just talking about all this stuff. And, and I, I remember, I remember getting up one morning and just being like, God, I, I know that you're real. And I know, you know, what your word says, but just, man, if you just prove it to me today, I'm, hmm. I'm done with this and I, and I won't, and I won't go back to it. And so I was, we were on an eight hour bus ride across Spain and a bunch of the guys in my bus were kind of sleeping, snoozing. And I was, hmm. I was listening to some music and I was reading a book and all of a sudden I just was like, man, I take my headphones off and I kind of close the iPad down, stopped reading for a minute. And the dude that was driving this little sprinter bus was scanning radio stations in the front of the bus. And 
it stopped on this channel, like when your scanning does, you know, it just kind of stops and plays. Yep. And I heard a part of Big Daddy Weed's song called Redeem. And I, it just stopped me dead in my tracks. And I was like, man, that's odd, like hearing that kind of music over here. And I knew it was Christian music because my dad had, you know, listened to Christian music on his job site. And so, man, I got to my hotel room and I looked that song up and I just, man, it hit me. And I was like, I'm, this is it. Like, I hear you. You know, it's like God was giving me that sign I needed. So I called my wife and I was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to quit my band. And she, she was like, you, you're crazy. Like, that's not going to happen. And I ended up quitting my band and flew home and we canceled our shows. Mm. Um, and, and I, and I just put down the music and we started going to this church in our hometown. And about a year later, this church came and asked me if I'd be interested in, you know, helping them launch a campus and lead, lead worship. And so there was about a two year period there where, you know, I wasn't doing much with my music. I was just kind of working on my relationship with my wife and my kids and with God. And then all of a sudden this church, you know, wants me to start leading worship for them. So I kind of took a part-time job leading worship. And then I took a full-time job a year later. So about two and a half years after I'd quit my band, I got this job working for a church. And, and I was just like, man, I'm, this is it. Like I was so happy. Like I'm finally like, I'm getting to play music for a living and it's just, but it's another way. Like God gave me everything I've ever dreamed of. So I'm, I'm working at this church and I worked there for about two and a half years. And um, there was a guy from Nashville that came over uh, to a Christmas service with his family and I was leading worship and he took me out to coffee the next day and wanted to hear my story mm. and he invited me to Nashville and we started writing some music together and we ended up writing my entire first record together and Chainbreaker was one of the first songs that we wrote. And so he played that song for the record label and they signed me to a, to a record deal off that demo before wow. they even ever even met me and and it was kind of like one of these things where like here i am i've had this dream i've been chasing this way i've been living for so long and then i gave it all up got my life together and was completely content and then god was like okay now now you're ready now i can now i can use you you can you can get out of the way of yourself mm -hmm. basically and and let me lead you and so that it just that was how it happened and, and it was kind of crazy because I, I mean honestly i was completely fine with not chasing that dream anymore because I felt like God had given me what I wanted, you know, leading that service and kind of building this at that church. And so when this all happened, it was just kind of like this blessing that I wasn't even looking for. Yeah. But it's been, yeah, it's been crazy, man. It's been really crazy. No, it's cool though. You know, I think so many people today, like there's so much talk about success and, I lost you know, the, um, vocal. Can, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I gotcha. Um, now, there's so much talk today about success, yeah. you know, and everybody's chasing it and pursuing it and they become obsessed that they lose focus on what's going on around them. And it sounds like for a period of time you did too, but then you had that moment on the bus yeah. and you, and you, you pulled the chute and said, I'm getting out yep. and you, you freed yourself. And, and it, it also sounds like you changed your energy profile. You said, I'm changing myself. And as a result, you attracted something different. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I, I knew that I knew just from the way I'd been brought up and, and, you know, in my family, I knew that the way I was living wasn't the right way to live. And, you know, mm -hmm. especially when I started having kids, you know, I didn't want them growing up the way that I was living. And so I knew there was a lot of stuff that needed to be changed. I just didn't know that I could do it, you know, and I didn't think I could, do, I knew I couldn't do it on my own. And I think that's where, I know that's where Jesus came in. Like, had I not, you know, known his story and, and just felt his grace and, and all that, I wouldn't be here. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like completely changed my life. But yeah, I mean, I think there comes a point in your life where you just kind of have to take kind of an assessment of everything that's going on. And, you know, you know, what you're chasing and who you're chasing it with, you know, becomes kind of one of these things where it's like, man, have I surrounded myself with the people that, you know, want good for me or just, you know, wanting to kind of ride the coattails or what, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I get it. You gotta find a group of people and put them around you that like kind of our accountability at the same time. So yeah, you, you built a different team. The, your, uh, your, the starting five that you were with wasn't the best for you. Now you gotta, you got the right starting five right. on the court. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's, it's awesome, man. I, I think it's, uh, I love hearing about people that have overcome themselves, which, 
which is great. You, you overcame situation, you overcame yourself. And as a result, your, you know, your, your career, your life, you know, I'm sure your family, everything's in a new place. Exactly. And, and that's the thing. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, and I'm, I mean, I just feel, I feel blessed to be here. Like I just, you know, every day I like get up and kind of pinch myself. Like, do I, is this really what I get to do? You know? And so, um, yeah, man, uh, I'm glad to, I'm, I'm happy that I overcame it. I mean, I, I couldn't have done it. Like I said, I couldn't have done it without, without the Lord. So. Yeah. I think a lot of people try to do everything on their own and it, it puts even more pressure on a pressurized person and situation. Yeah, exactly. For sure. You know, and, and in the end, what happens? You end up falling deeper. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. I, I think for, for a while, God let me go. Yeah. Well, look, you can try that on your own. And I, and I did, you know, and I think that was the biggest thing for, for a number of years why I kind of felt the way I did was because I, you know, I had a support system, you know, in my family and in my community that told me I could be anything I wanted to be. And in high school, I, you know, I kind of messed that up and then I went to art school and dropped out and then mm. had this music career that I had. And, and so it was just kind of like all these things in my life that I was looking at. And I, and I finally was like, okay, man, I can't do this. Like, yeah, you're going to have to take, you know, basically <laughs> Jesus take the wheel. Kind take of the thing. wheel. Right. <laughs> right. Zach, you know, I, I like to talk a lot about habits. Like for you, what, what's a typical day like, you know, in the life of Zach Williams? I know they're probably more, I, I would imagine, you know, because we're all somewhat locked down over 2020, the days started to run together and, and look the same, you know, for a rock, for a rocker, uh, you know, last year was very atypical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last year was, there was a lot of just sitting at the house, you know, kind of playing games and watching movies. I, I, so I, lo I love to cook. And uh, mm. like, if I've got the time in the afternoons, like if, if we're not super busy, um, I'll go down to the grocery store and grab stuff and cook dinner my kids love to kind of get at the thing at the you know counter and, and kind of help me cut everything up and get it all prepped and so i do a lot of cooking you know that's kind of yeah. my passion too besides besides uh music but um yeah man a typical day is for me it's pretty boring i would say this these last few weeks i've just been getting up and going in for for song rights and and just kind of working throughout the day and then coming home and cooking dinner with my family and then kind of laying on the couch and vegging out a little bit so so uh, so are you a big workout guy or that's that's not that's not your thing at this point I and mean, i'll tell you why the, the, the last two times that i've started working out with my wife i've ended up doing something and have i had to have ne i've had two neck surgeries now oh wow about five six years ago she was doing this p90x oh yeah 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 and I'm a big dude, like I'm six six, and we we were living in a house at the time that only had eight foot ceilings, and I'm trying <laughs> to do all these workouts without like touching, you know. I'm trying to do it without like, but I'm hindering myself as I'm doing it. I could tell. Yeah. I ended up like waking up a few days later, and I was like, man, something is jacked up in my neck, and uh, went to the doctor and had a bulging disc, and ended up having to have a fusion. Mm. And then last year, during all this stuff that was going on, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get back out on the treadmill, I'm gonna start running, I'm gonna get myself back in shape a little bit. And, you know, I was a little like jumping in a little too quick. And about the third day from going from zero to running two and a half miles with with weights doing all this workout stuff <laughs> I something in the disc below the one I'd had surgery on. And I had to have surgery in April of this past year. And so I was just like, man, I'm I'm getting too old, I guess, to try to work. So I don't do I don't do a lot of working out unless it's like you know, playing some basketball or something like yeah, that. Yeah, hey, listen, you're in your forties now, man. It's a different game, different world. I know, and I, I, I tell my wife, I'm like, I, I don't have anybody impressed. You know, if, if you if you like the way I look, I'm good. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I think uh, you know what you've what you've overcome has been pretty pretty amazing. I did want to ask you, what was it like for you to perform with a legend like Dolly Parton? Man, she was she was absolutely amazing. She's the real deal. Like when when you hear people tell you, you know, don't don't meet your heroes, you know, they'll they're gonna let you down. It's kind of like I've heard that so many times. I guess so many people have met people that have kind of like put them off, you know. But she just had this way about her, like just making you feel like you were the only person in the room. And mm. after you know five or ten minutes of hanging out with her, she just kind of she kind of felt like that fun aunt, you know, that comes. Yeah. To it's always like the life of the party. And 
Uh, but she was a champion from like day one for this song and just, I mean, she came in and could have just tracked a vocal and left and I would have been fine with it. But we spent about four hours in the studio that day really working on her part. She wanted it to be just perfect and she really wanted it to be what I wanted. And so uh, getting to know her and getting to hang out and, you know, it, it, she, she's been awesome. So it was great. Yeah, no, she's she has a great energy and a great vibe, and you can tell that she's she's passionate about what she yeah. does still, and she she seems to do it in her own way too. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, I think living in Nashville, um, it's it's such a big city, but it's also like a small group, and mm -hmm. so I think when you see somebody like her that's had a career as long as she she's had, you know, you don't get there. Um, you know, from, from being the person that thinks they're better than everybody else. She's just always kept this mentality of like, she still remembers where she was. You know, I remember yeah. we were shooting the music video for the, it was about 26 degrees that day. And we were in this old barn and everybody was freezing. We had heaters running everywhere. And, you know, we were kind of back to back in this video and I could, I could feel her like kind of shaking. And I, I stopped and asked her if she needed to take a break and warm up and, she said, honey, I lived in a house for 18 years colder than this. She said, I'll be fine. And I was just wow. Like, oh, you got it. So I love that. That's kind of the person she was. And she's, she was great, though. Yeah. To to total gamer. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, another good team member, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, Zach, I got one last question for you because I know you have, you have a hard stop, but I call it the Becoming a Champion show. And I always say we're all on a journey to become a champion and whatever it is, whether it's being a songwriter, whether it's a father, w husband, whatever it may be. But, uh, you know, what does the word champion mean to you? Well, I think a champion, I also think of somebody that like is going to go to bat and support somebody else. Like, mm. when I, you know, I think about the people that since I've moved to this town have kind of taken me under their wing and really championed my success. Even even the people that that kind of probably take their job, you know, like that's it's one of those towns where when you move in into town here, it's like everybody's going for the same thing. Everybody wants to be the best songwriter, the best mm -hmm. artist. But you have so many people in this town that also remember where they were when they got here and how easy it was to to be just kind of pushed away or swept under the rug. I think being a champion also means championing somebody else's dream. Yeah. Well, I, well, I want to tell you this, you know, just, just in, in closing here, you know, your video that you did, you know, from the prison. Yeah. I, I think that day that, y you know, you, you were a champion and that you were lifting those people up, you know, and letting them, you know, feel your energy and feel your yeah. vibe and, and show them, you know, what. Oh, man, I, I appreciate that. That, that was, an, that was an amazing day. Yeah. One I'll never forget. For sure. Oh, I bet it's, it, it just, you know, you can even feel it, how it, how it, you know, translates through the video. So super, super cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So, but anyway, I want to be uh, courteous to your time. And I know, uh, you know, you got a busy day ahead, I'm sure. Oh, so. yeah, that's what we lined up today. So, yeah. And I had a good time. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. It's, it, I, I look forward to uh, meeting you, uh, you know, in person someday. And we'll, we'll uh, you know, maybe we'll do a little one on one. There we go. <laughs> we might have to play horse. I don't know if I'm up for one on one anymore. That's true. That's true. I don't want you to get injured. <laughs> Luckily, I, you know, I, 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 I'm a coach and I do rehab so I can take care of you if you do go there down. You go. I <laughs> you, man. Well, hey, it's good talking to you, brother. All right, Zach. Have, have a great day. I'll talk to you. All right, thank you. See ya. I told you that was going to be a great episode, right? You know, I always find it fascinating when we can get to see the person behind the person. You know, we, we see Zach on YouTube with millions and millions of followers. You know, we know he, he travels all around the world singing and, and inspiring crowds and filling up arenas and stadiums. We see him on TV. That's the best. But what I find even better is getting to meet the man behind the screen and meet the man that is the man. And I, I think that's so cool. And just listening to today's episode and sitting with Zach and talking and getting to know him, we realized that it wasn't easy. And today we're pursuing success. So many of us are pursuing success. And we're burning ourselves out. We're fatiguing ourselves. We're doing whatever it takes. And we're costing ourselves probably a lot more than we're going to gain. And what I loved about sitting with Zach is he said, hey, I had to quit. I had to quit my dream of pursuing music. And here he was flying around the world. He's in Europe. And he listens 
to a song on the radio that's playing in the Sprinter van. And he says, that's it. I'm done. I got to go back. I got to go back to Arkansas with my family. I'm quitting the band. I'm going back to Arkansas. And I got to get myself right. And how many of you have to get yourselves right before you can have success? So for those of you that feel like you're, you're treading water, you're climbing uphill constantly, and it's wearing you down, you feel like you keep getting pushed back, maybe you need to hit pause and get yourself restarted again by investing in yourself and coming back to your dream just a little bit later. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I know I did. It's always great to sit with people that have made it. And if you enjoyed today's episode, like I always say, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and write in the comments. Let me know that you're out there. Let me know that you enjoyed today's episode. And if you're looking for some other guests for the show, write their name down. Let's see if we can get them. And thanks again for listening to The Becoming a champion show, and we'll see you soon. See ya.